Happy 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time, my friends. Thank you for joining me. And no team, just me alone here, <laughs> uh, sharing with you the, the Word of God for this Sunday. And it comes from the fourth chapter of Mark, verses 35 to 41. On that day, <clears throat> excuse me, on that day as evening drew on, Jesus said to them, let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, <clears throat> they took him with them in the boat just as he was. A violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling with water. Jesus was in the stern of the boat, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're about to perish? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Jesus asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even the wind and sea obey him? <laughs> it's a great gospel, isn't it? Fourth chapter of Mark, this twelfth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Let me ask you something. <clears throat> Have you ever gone to Mass and instead of receiving one, you receive four or five homilies <laughs> that's supposed to be just one homily? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where it just kind of goes on and on and on and you're thinking to yourself, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, we've all been there. Uh, and I've been... Many times the priests doing it, where people are looking at their watches, and I can see them do it. And it's one of those things, it took me years to kind of figure all this stuff out. But when you have a gospel like this, it's so, it's so juicy. It's, it's so filled with so many ways, so many riches, so many truths that as a preacher... It's like, I want to get to all of them because they're so wonderful. And, of course, you can't do that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's the experience of, and I've been up there on the pulpit, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, Ron, okay, it's gone on too long. Land the plane. Land the plane. But I, I can't find the runway. So I just kind of circle and circle waiting to see where I can get out. <laughs> Anyway, this is a great gospel, and there were a number of homilies that I'd like to give. What I'd like to do for just a couple of minutes is break open another truth that I found in this scripture, and it centers around this question, why did Jesus fall asleep in that boat? You know, how is it even possible in the midst of this storm, the boat being tossed back and forth, the wind blowing, being sprayed with the ocean waves, the screaming and the terror of those on board, fearful for their very lives, and in the midst of all of that, you drift away into a peaceful slumber? <laughs> huh. And that's what struck me about this scripture today. How did that happen? I mean, the tragedy here, it's not the storm that we heard about in this scripture. It's not the peril of a collapsing boat. The tragedy here is the fact that the disciples let Jesus fall asleep. Obviously, they didn't head out into the water that day in the midst of a raging storm. 
You know, no, when, when they went out, it was probably a really nice day with blue skies and a light breeze. I mean, who wouldn't want to go sailing? Sit back, have a glass of chilled sangria, listen some smooth jazz. <laughs> Sounds like a great day to me. And while it doesn't tell us in Scripture what they talked about as they were in the boat moving further and further out into the water, I can only guess that it must have been, I don't know, rather tepid, the conversation, and rather obviously uninteresting to Jesus. Or is it disinterest? No, uninteresting to Jesus. And we've all been there, you know, sitting around with a small group of people who are talking about something that you could really care less about. <laughs> you know, like fantasy football. <laughs> or, or the latest episode of a Netflix show that you haven't even seen. And they're going on and on and on about it, and you're just thinking, oh my, oh my. And the more they go on and on, clearly not inviting you into the conversation, what happens? You know, the more you kind of drift away from the conversation. And isn't that what happened out on the boat with Jesus? The disciples were so focused, I guess, upon themselves and gave Jesus so little attention that he just kind of drifted away to the background of activity and, like any of us, became bored and then tired and found a cushion and just swung his feet up and just fell asleep. And it made me wonder if Jesus so often feels that same way in the boat of my life, or maybe yours, how I too can become, I don't know, so consumed with my own stuff, my own pettiness and problems and responsibilities and schedule and Facebook posts, and scrolling Instagram feeds, and rushing to lunches with friends, and making dinner with the family while doing my laundry and watching Netflix. And then around 10.30 at night, I plop into bed in the midst of all that stuff. And I think, did I ever once acknowledge Jesus present in the midst of it? Did I even once thank him for any of those blessings that were a part of my day? I mean, did I, uh, did I call upon his name for the friend I was talking to who's going through a rough time in her marriage? Did I hang up the phone? <laughs> I know I'm, I, I'm like an old time phone. But did I hang up the phone and just pause and ask God to bless her? Did I even give God 10 seconds today? Or, I don't, did I let him fall asleep? We know because Jesus told us that he is with you. Come good days or bad days when you're on top of the world and when you've been crushed underneath it, Jesus is with you, is there. Do I give him my attention? So folks, this 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time, today, not this week, not this month, today, this Sunday, let's wake him up, right? Let, let's give him so much attention and conversation today that Jesus can't possibly drift off. You know, that whether our day is beautiful and blue skies or our day is being tossed by waves and trouble, make Jesus the very center of all of it. Because when we do, as the disciples found out, we experience that 
calming presence and indescribable peace telling us that all will be well. Amen. Thank you for sharing a part of your beautiful day with me today. May God's blessing be upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. See you tomorrow. Thank you.